guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episodes 9 and 10 of Saki Side A. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 9 in 3, 2, 1, go. Oh my god. Excuse me. You know, it's funny. And I gotta say this now. Okay, so one of my rhythm games... I never would have thought this. But one of my rhythm games has this opening song in the game. And so I was playing... I was playing the game because one, um... I was getting gems for my best girl's birthday card. Even though her birthday's not until the end of the month. Um, but they were like, yeah, we're releasing the birthday cards for these girls for this, <laughs> this month of August today, or like, um, at the time for Japan the next day, but for me, no, that, that day, but the next day for me. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play, and so I was looking for new songs that I hadn't played, and I look and I see the girl with the ponytail, and I'm like, why does she look familiar to me? And then I was like, well, let me click on the song real quick. And then I start listening to it, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I was like, of course, it's one of the shows that I'm reacting to as a Patreon show. Because normally, like, any of the songs um, I have heard in either Bunsity or D4DJ for This Is D4DJ, um, I've watched the show already. Like, for uh, Monthly Girls and Saki kun for the longest time, like, I, I heard that in Bunsity, and then finally I watched it, and, of course, fucking loved it. So it's kind of the same thing. You would think more that would be Saki's sister would do the first round. Cool. Bam. Scared. <laughs> yeah, that was a mirror. I, I wouldn't try that. 
No, don't, don't do that. Mm -mm. And see, and she used to do the same ish to Saki. Oh. Oh, yeah, y'all gonna see with your own two eyes. <laughs> about to beat your ass. Oh, God. Very scary. Because still, and I'm gonna say it once again, why the fuck would you have your best player go first? It would be smart to have your best player go last. But nah, there is a strategy that they're doing by having her go first. It's like almost she's like one step ahead of everybody due to that mirror phase. So it's just like she can see everyone's like what they're thinking, the next move, everything. So <laughs> she she can pretty much see everything. She knows all, sees all. Mm -mm. You don't mess with that. Damn.
I have nothing to say. <laughs> oh God. Damn. Girl, the damn tire was doing blay blay. I, I mean, <laughs> see, because once again. She is on a higher freaking level than anyone else. The only one who can defeat her is her sister. Uh, if it was me and any one of them girls, I'd have been like, you know what? I quit. Let me lose and let someone else take my place. Because she is like eating them. She is like fucking them over. They are like putty in the palm of her hands. And no matter what they do and thinking like, oh, we could be one step ahead of her, they're not. She's always like several steps ahead.
by using your skull. We hope. Hey, she's having a positive thinking skill. Outlook on everything. Even though she's losing, she's still not giving up. And you have to do the same thing. It's good to build up your skill, right? You take everything you learn and you use it in the match. My baby. <laughs> you don't have a clue. Also, the fact that round one literally took the whole damn episode. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like at the same time, she is waiting for one of y'all to make the move where she can literally be like, wow, give me your points. And I Feel it, it's coming.
accept it. She's questioning everything, even as of now. There is a lot riding on this, especially for all three. Saki says they're not so much, because the girl got everything in the bag. She is eating them in the palm of her hands, because once again, those girls are like putty in her mother effing hands. Once she did what she did in this episode, it's just like, okay, you know, once again, I quit, I forfeit, you know, have somebody else take my fucking place, because bruh. I mean, once we got to the point where, like, slowly but surely, Saki sister's skill was coming out, and you get to the moment where it shows um, Kuro sitting there, and there's a mirror behind her, literally showing her back. Excuse me. But almost, like, at the same time, her her plays, her moves, and everything. It's just like, damn. And the fact is, with each of these girls, they're questioning every little strategic god damn it. Every fucking move. Everything. They are trying to find any little thing that they can to defeat her. But um, <laughs> strategic, that's the word. Um, I, I just don't think she is undefeatable. She can't be beaten. Like, no. Only Saki can defeat her. Baby would be sleeping right now. If only she knew what was happening. But any one of them could win this match. It's just, oh my god, I could not be sleepy. It's only 11.47. Um, it's anybody's move. It's anybody's game. But even the once again, Saki sister is destroying them. One of them has to have something, a skill, just anything to take her down or to at least if it's not taking Saki's sister sisters down at least it has to be one of the other two so that Kuro can eventually get a second or third place to still stay up in the running so that you know we can move on but like I said a lot is riding on this especially for Kuro and everyone else who was watching her because one wrong move from any one of these girls they can be sent to the bottom and eventually disqualified and out of the running to winning this whole freaking thing. But ugh, who, who really freaking knows? It's a little weird that Nodoka is sleeping. You know, you would think she'd be wide awake watching this match and such because, I mean, yeah, that those are her friends, but I get it. She is tired. She's been doing a lot of busy things as well, so I get it. But it, it's nice to see in the next episode we're going to have, like, a dream sequence. So I wonder how that's going to go. And we're going to see the conclusion of this match. So, once again, it is anybody's game. But go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you guys in one second for episode 10. Alrighty, episode 10 in 3, 2, 1, go.
Yes. No, don't say that. Don't say that, Coral. You got this.
Yeah, that's another one where I would definitely throw in that white towel. Jesus. Because there was no way in hell none of them would have kicked her ass. Like, oh my god. Damn. There's no fucking way that either one of them can. Find your bus. See, you know, that is a little weird because I would have assumed and I, no, I did assume this. I always thought that Saki with her style that hers could never be similar to her sister's. But in a way, they both are. It feels like if those two eventually do go against each other, which we know it's going to happen, they're going to counter each other almost every single time.
Oh, most definitely. Because if y'all have problems with her, the pros probably had problems with her. Anybody who went against her had problems against her. Like, seriously. What can y'all do? How can you defeat someone like her? These two with a shade, I can't. <laughs> oh my god! Let's see how the fuck can any one of y'all put a stop to it.
Jesus Christ. It's gotta be game. Cause we're now already, we're 17 minutes into this episode and we have like seven minutes left. Oh my God, this is, it, it's just stressful. How in the fuck can, like, Saki, I need you to come in and beat your sister's ass, please. She's too damn strong. Like, oh my God, this is so depressing. And I get it, they are, all three of them are trying their best. They're, they really are, but still, Saki's sister is overtaking them so freaking much, and I don't like that. Exactly. She cannot be stopped, regardless of whatever these three do. She can't be stopped. Game over. Round over. Match over. God, this show stresses me out. I mean, I have never had, the last time I had a show stressed me out, I cried. I think you're on the floor, yeah. You're falling. I see two turns. Please, you don't want to hurt yourself. Of course. <laughs>
You might seriously hurt yourself after this. You're not in the episode, you bitch. You are a bitch to end the episode like that. Right when it was getting good, you end the fucking episode. That is bullshit. I didn't even taste like flavored water. This tastes like pure water, but that's okay. I like water. Silky. I get it. You secretly in double at home, but baby. That's too much. Now seeing that she, by using double, it can literally take her out and make her faint. No. And oh, no. And oh, P-E, nope, baby. Mm -mm. That's very reckless, but I get it. You, you know, you have to hone that craft and cherish it and just... Try to make it better, and really, she is trying her ass off, but we don't need her to get really hurt again and such. And so, her using it, even in this moment for this match, like, she's going to be risking a lot in these next two episodes. However, these next two episodes freaking end. Oh. Yeah, and Nanoka only has one bow in when she should be having two. Wait, we're up. Wait, 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 wait. We not getting context on that? Y'all just gonna leave that like that? Y'all expect me to wait until next freaking week on Monday or Tuesday whenever I record the next two episodes to find out what the heck that means and what the heck is gonna happen after that? No, that that's BS. Pure BS. But yes, this these two episodes, I mean, dang, between these two episodes of this show and the current two episodes of Descending Stories, this was very depressing. And I'm not, not more in a bad way, more like depressing good. And seeing how these girls, like, they were all at their highs at the beginning of this. Like, hella excited, but still a little bit nervous. To go against Saki's sister and just to see where we are at the end of this episode and being like, God damn, like, <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> Truly, what can we do against this character? How do you defeat someone like that? Like, it gives you so many feels to any other, like, strategy game, uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, anything. D pretty much where it's like, damn, how the fuck do you beat, like, <laughs> this hard OP as fuck <laughs> character. That's like when, oh my god, like when the early, early season, I think it's like season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! came, when that, when that was being dubbed in like the early years of the 2000s and such, and you're getting closer and closer to like the last few episodes of um, Pegasus and Yu-Gi's like battle, their final, final matches and such, which was like I think, what, in total, like, eight episodes? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen um, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! But I I would always hate when it would get so good, and then it would just be like, here's the to be continued. It's like, God, you get it! Ah! So that's why, that's why maybe one of the many reasons why I, hate, I cannot stand cliffhangers, because it gets so good, and they're like, abruptly end next week, please. You're gonna do fine. Be like, no the fuck I'm not. I need the next freaking officer. And I remember as a kid, there was one in the in the final few matches or episodes leading up to Yugi winning against Pegasus, there was this one moment, I don't really remember it, because it's been a long freaking time, 
And it was getting so good and it ended and I screamed at my television. And my parents were a little bit upset telling me not to scream at it. But I was like, it was getting so good and such. But I mean, to be in that moment, to yes, be being hella depressed over this match and being mentally drained because these girls are physically and mentally drained over Saki's sister, like, I don't know what they could do. And it, it, I wish Nadoka was there with them in that moment to where, like, they, when there was an intervention, that she could have talked th to them and being like, Kuro, it's okay. You got this. Like, even though we are on the same team, you're still my friend. I'm going to confine in you or you're going to confine in me and we're going to find some way for you to defeat this girl. But because of the fact is, like, Kuro has to confine in her teammates, it's a little bit hard. The dream sequence was a little bit weird, but I felt like that had to be a premonition of Nadoka really thinking about her former teammates and eventually seeing them again. So here's also hoping that we do get to see them in the next week, next week's episode and actually talking to each other. So hopefully, yes, because I need that in my life. I'm just saying. But who really knows how the heck these next two episodes are going to go next week. But other than that, guys, that is my action review towards episodes 9 and 10 of Saki Side A. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for Patreons and next Monday for everybody else for episodes 11 and 12. Until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.